life starts putting barriers in front of you when you least expect it. As we grew, my mother thought, all right, I'm going to make her grateful. I'm going to sign her up for ballet. <laughs> so she did. She signed me up for this wonderful class, and I thought, what a fantastic thing for my mother to do for me. I started in third grade, and I had tutus, white socks. I loved them, those little scoop neck things with sequins. So awesome. And I can still do all the normal things with my feet, not too long anymore, but all the different positions, and I can do and sit there, and the graceful of the arms. She really had something in mind when she did this. They still call me sir, but I'm a graceful sir. <laughs> Mrs. Rinaldo was our instructor. Now, I want you to envision her a bit. She is a fairly small woman, about 5'4", very bony shoulders and neck. She was graceful. She held herself completely erect and always poised for action. I don't know how to explain that any better than poised for action. You know she could take off in a moment. She had very long pointy fingers because she liked to poke them in her arms. Get those hands up. Get them up. Get, 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 get them up. And so you would. You'd raise, you'd raise them for her. Yes. You don't want to get poked. Yes. Like a swan. We want to be like a swan. And she had big, tall, crispy hair. There was something when she's doing this thing and the hair started moving in one direction, she'd have to kind of like move it back up again. Okay? Serious. So here we are learning to be graceful. After many years, finally in seventh grade, she decides she's going to have a recital with all of her students. We had boys and girls in our class, and she said, we're going to do a recital. And so she starts making the assignments. You get to do this, and you get to do this, and she's moving her way on down the line of everybody and how she's going to assign them. I'm waiting. Here I am. I mean, she, I didn't know she was doing it in height order because see, I was always at the end. They always kind of like moved right up, and there's Carol. Hello, here I am. I'm the tall ballerina. Yeah, hello. And she hadn't given me an assignment yet. And finally I said, well, Mrs. Ronaldo, what do I get to do? And she goes, oh, Carol, here's what you get to do. At the end, there's this grand swell of music, the grand finale. What's going to happen is you're going to do the grand jeté. You will be out here in the wings. You're going to do one, two, three steps, and you will leap through the air just like Brishnikov does. And it was perfect because I could leap like a gazelle. I had legs like you wouldn't believe. These legs, I, I flew everywhere. I didn't need a trampoline because it went quick, quick, there. It was wonderful. And she goes, but wait, Carol, don't get excited yet. Even better yet, we're going to have a young man catch you. And I went, not Earl. <laughs> Earl's the only other one right next to me that hadn't been selected yet. Now, he's about five, six. Very, very small little pocket protector in here. Earl was a tapper, okay? He was doing river dance tapping before it was even popular, okay? I'd kill Earl. I was mortified. And she goes, oh, no, 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 Carol, just a moment. She turns around and she waves to the door. She goes, come in, Steve. In comes the captain of the senior football team. He strolls down and he was gorgeous. This was when I wished I wore a bra. <laughs> he comes down and I go, he's going to catch me. Can we practice now? And she goes, well, I guess so. And I go, Steve, just stand right over there. And so mm, mm, take my breath. One, two, three. I leap through the air and he caught me ah, like that. It took him about five minutes to pry me off because he's like, smells so good. And he's like, he's a man. I had, hello, can we practice a lot? Get away. I ah, like that. Finally, we tore me off and we went out and we practiced. And he practiced in public with me. How cool. This senior hunk is practicing catching me in the park at school. It didn't make any difference. And we had it nailed. I mean, we could do it sight and scene. I'd go like this and I'd go, catch me. And I'd run. In fact, that's how I tested my husband out the first time I met him. I go, catch me. And he did. And he only went, huh? Seriously, you ask him. He'll tell me, just say catch me. And he goes, oh, no. <laughs> we had it perfect. So now comes the recital. I have this lovely flowing outfit. I mean, it was quite gorgeous. It was very similar to this, but it was white. Everything was white, the hose. I was even a toe dancer at that point. I loved doing toe. Could really point with the best of them. And I'm over here watching everyone really perform. And we have about 100 parents out in the audience. What a big deal. 
and I'm taking big breaths, big breaths, and I haven't seen Steve yet. You know, I don't need to worry about him. He's always been there when I need him and ready to go. And all of a sudden, it's time, and I'm ready, ready, and the music comes up, and I go, I go one, two, three, and I leap up in the air, and I'm going to freeze me right there. Over here is Earl. He's braced. A look of pure terror. He's got a little suit on and a tie. What had happened the day before is Steve had gotten injured in a football game. He was in the hospital. They decided they wouldn't upset me, so they put in a substitute. This is what it sounds like when a ballerina screams. No! My knee hit him right there in the gut. We hit the floor and we slid right off the stage. Now it's dead quiet. I'm laying on Earl. He looks at me and he says, just get off. <laughs> oh, man. Earl, are you okay? I can't believe I ripped my whole Part of my pantyhose is still on the stage. <laughs> now it's dead quiet out in the audience. I think they thought we died. I don't know. <laughs> Poor Earl looks at me and he goes, get up. And I go, what? He goes, get up, we got to go out. And I go, oh, look what out there. He goes, just get up. And so he moves and he protects me. Only broke one rib. <laughs> Takes me by the hand and he drags me out into the middle of the stage in a spotlight very similar to this, dead quiet. He looks at everybody. He grins and he goes, ta-da. <laughs> we got a standing ovation. You know, we look at a leap of faith. Quite frankly, we have to be concerned about what happens. You know, I usually don't ever tell the other side of the story, but since I've had some latitude today to give you an idea of what's going on, what happened afterwards, is of course I waited back in the wings, making sure everyone was gone, only my mother waited for me. She knew it was going to take a while. She knew enough not to come and see me because I was purely mortified. The big girl crushes small boy. You know, <laughs> she knew this was going to be in the Mason City Papers probably. And Mrs. Ronaldo comes up to me and she goes, Carol, you can't be a ballerina anymore. You're too big, too tall. So I don't want you coming to classes anymore. Pack up your shoes, go away. She told me I can't do that anymore. I had dreamed of being a ballerina. I could leap like a gazelle, for heaven's sakes. You know, I was ready. I envisioned myself dancing on Carnegie Hall. I thought, wouldn't that be awesome to do that? And I found out that it was a path. All of a sudden now, I was told I can't do that anymore. Not through any fault of my own, but I can't do that anymore. And I'm all of a sudden taking a path that I'd never planned and just moving on my way. I did get back at Mrs. Ronaldo, though, because in 1988, I moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know there's a Carnegie University? And I happened to introduce myself to the theater guy. He ran the lights. So on a Sunday, he turned the lights on the stage on their Carnegie Hall, and I did a big leap. <laughs> and I filmed it. You know, she's not going to tell me I can't do that anymore. But see, when you're young, you go, oh, you must know better. So we worry about the issues. We find out life isn't fair.